So one of those things that people had asked me was, you know, hey, can you do more of these by the numbers videos? But could you do it in this format? Would you look at the numbers, analyze them, try to recreate it, and show what you would do to fix it all out here on the range? So I love that idea. I appreciate the comments to do that. So we're gonna do that here. So I'm gonna finish decorating, but in this video, we're gonna go by the numbers. Hey everybody, Scott Oden coming at you. We are gonna go by the numbers here. So again, we are going through user sent in numbers, uh, sent to Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook. I will link all that down below. If you wanna have your numbers checked out, make sure you send those in. So today we are looking at some numbers sent in by Tyler Huell. Tyler H, I hope I say that correct. Uh, thanks Tyler for sending them in. And Tyler has told me he's having some issues, you know, with his irons uh, specifically. So let's take a look at his numbers and let's do a little bit of a breakdown here first of what we see going on with those numbers. So the first thing is these are gonna be a seven iron and these numbers um, are gonna show a couple of things. The first thing I like to look at is, let's look at some carry yardages to see where we're at. So when he hits it good, it looks like we have some good carry yardage numbers, but the issue is we're not hitting those numbers all the time. Um, we have some pretty wide range in those numbers as we go. The other thing I'm seeing is there's a lot of difference in the launch angle. I'm also seeing a lot of difference in smash factor as well, okay? so. Here's what we gotta do when we start looking at this. Now we are getting some pulls and more draws. So let's take a look here. His launch horizontal. Let's go ahead. He's launching it with the closed face most of the time. Let's see. He does have this little bit of a rightward face on this one, 1.5, and he's getting it to draw. So that's that shows a little bit of good stuff. And you can see the distance on that one was pretty good at 168. The biggest thing I'm seeing is we got to get some contact and we got to get some launch on these golf balls um, because that smash is so, so low as we go. And so is that vertical launch is so low. So when I see somebody hitting a shot like that, so let's try and hit one here and see what we get, okay? When I see somebody that's kind of drawing the ball, but they're having this ball take off super low, where they're getting some kind of low launches, things like that, and you're getting a low smash factor. What I typically see from players, and let's check out this launch vertical, even that's high. What I typically see is for us to launch the ball that low, it's almost like we have to be hitting the ball thin, right? Like if I, I, I don't think I can physically launch one that low, if I hit it and I get the club face on the ball. I, I just don't know if I can do it. So what that tells me is we have to be coming into the ball some way too shallow to it, okay? Where we're just not getting the club face onto the golf ball. Let's see if we can do that. I'm gonna try that one more time here. Let's see if, I mean, yeah, when I try to really hit down on it, I just cannot get the ball to launch that low. It's, it's really hard. Um, to do. So it's possible that that's what that is, where we're hitting down on it too much. Um, that would make those smash factor numbers go down. It also has a look like we are maybe chunking the ball a little bit. But the bigger thing I would work on here is, is we have too much going on that's too different. Okay, so if I'm a player and I start looking at my numbers and I say, all right, I've got the distances are all over the place. Smash factors all over the place. Uh, I've got launches that are varying. I've got a good 40 to 50 yards in between my irons, you know, between the same iron, but different shots. What I'm gonna work on is I have to get back to a place of neutral, okay? So my goal becomes trying to get to where I feel like the club is very neutral and it's very, I'm trying to get my efficiency up. I wanna be efficient. It's not about, you know, it's, it's okay if I hit one 180 yards once, 
but I'm not gonna be happy with that if I have the other 10 or 20 shots, you know, that aren't getting there. I wanna know how far it's gonna go. So what I would be working on as we do this is get back to a place of something pretty neutral as we're going through a swing. So I would actually start with some real small swings, bringing the club back to about belt high and just feeling everything to go together through to belt high. And let's just hit some shots like that. And what I wanna watch as I do this is, I wanna see things normalize as I go through. So I wanna get things together before I go and try and just blast away. So you can see there, 18 degrees of launch, 1.27 smash. Smash should be a little low with the range ball, but we'll see. Uh, we're looking at 50 yards, so let's do that again. Okay, so I hit the ground there. That's probably gonna be something that we saw him do, okay? We're gonna miss some of that club data. Okay, so let's do that again. I feel like I went a little bigger there, but the key here being, let's get on these small swings. See how my smash factor went up? It went to 1.32, angle of attack still pretty close, going down, getting that launch 18 degrees again, and working on shots that are consistent and efficient. Now that one should be down a little bit. I hit the toe, so my smash should drop. There we go. Angle of attack, I kind of probably hit a little bit of the mat first, so that makes it go up. And what happens is I really start getting a dialing in of what really makes me successful with hitting a golf ball. Again, smash goes back up. 17.6 for that launch, so we're right in the same ballpark. And then from there, I can actually start working on things. But when we've got a large range of shots going on, the last thing I wanna do is get up here and just start swinging away. Cause like I didn't hit that very good. I felt like I hit the mat. You can see the smash goes down. Um, you know, the angle of attack gets all off cause I made terrible contact and I really don't know where to start with what I would look at. So, I mean, the first thing would be smash, you know, like, like, hey, let's not chunk it, but you know, how did I do that? What did I do to make this go on? And so what I see a lot of really good players do is they really work on these small shots, trying to get their numbers to shrink. And then as I do that, what I'm gonna do is just go up. So I'm gonna go up a little bit. I'm gonna call it 10% that I'm gonna add. Whatever that feels like to you. So you can see my smash dropped a touch. So I didn't do it quite as good as when I was going slower. So I have to stay here. I've gotta stay on these numbers on that size. That one was hit a lot better. I think I hit that a little too big, but you can see 130 carry there. And you can see how as I'm going up, my numbers are staying fairly similar. Smash is similar, but everything else is staying the same as we go. Not bad there, a little tiny thin. So the smash went down just a little bit, but then that makes the launch go down. But I start getting a really good understanding of what's going on. And then once I feel like I do a couple good, let's go up another 10%. And what'll happen is, now I felt like I hit that one really good, okay? What's gonna happen, launch is the same, smash down a little, but angle of attack, good. What'll happen is I'll start getting to a point where I realize, you know what? I no longer can control this. So for me, personally, that's around, you know, this is my seven iron, around 165 yards for me personally is where I really kind of maxing out, you know, I can do things to get more speed, but, um, and not have to sacrifice my control, but that's something we would work on, you know, in other areas of the game. The other thing is you'll learn where are you the most efficient at? Where should you be playing from? And then once I do that, if you wanted to work on adding a little draw to it, okay, I'm gonna try to swing out at this ball a little bit put a little draw motion on it. That makes it go a little farther. 
I can get these things dialed in. But the number one thing I see when people are hitting and they got their numbers and you're looking at them is we need something that we can consistently work on. So if it's, if it's all over the place and all the numbers are constantly changing, then we need to get back to hitting them and something that is predictable, something that then we could work on. You know, if you're hitting a bunch and you know, I'm okay with that 17 and a half to 18 degrees of launch, but if I'm hitting them and I'm saying, all right, hey, I'm actually like at 12, I would like it higher, then I could actually work on that. But if it's 12 one swing, 20 the next, 25 the next, six the next, I don't know what to do. So I would really start working on that. You don't have to make full swings to get better. If I hit my entire bucket at this speed, I know I could go out to the range. With that shot, that's something I could do. It's because I practice at these speeds and I build some confidence in my ability to strike the golf ball. So what I would look at, so for Tyler, the first thing is, as we're looking at the numbers is, let's start getting something that we can actually work on. So getting them will get a little bit closer together. Let's start slow, let's build up, and let's get ourselves going. And then we can actually start picking out some numbers that maybe, hey, we don't like this, we don't like that. But I bet you, you start figuring out what you would like to do with them as you start stepping your way up. So something to check out as you're going through. And remember, if you're interested in all the flight scope, I love my Mevo Plus. It's been great for my game. We have more coming with a series. Uh, I just shot my best tournament round in quite some time for this last round. And uh, I'm excited to share that with you and how that process has looked. Uh, Mevo Plus has been a big part of that. And also, they have their sale going on. So make sure you check that out. I will have all that linked down below. But if you have any questions about it, please leave comments down below. If you like the format of the videos, if you have suggestions for the format of the videos, please leave comments down below. I'm here to make them as educational and entertaining for you. So please let me know. And uh, as always, thanks for watching. Click that subscribe button if you're not a subscriber already. And we'll see you in the next one. Peace.